Hi, I'm Wallace Kelly, and I'm going to show you how the application configuration file works in .NET. Here I have a simple command line program. It has one line of code, a console write line, that writes out which version of the CLR that we're using. And when I compile this program, it compiles into my app config demo bin debug folder, and you'll see that I simply have an app config demo.exe and a PDB file. If I run this exe, you can see the result. It says that I happen to be running this program in the CLR version 2.0. And what I'd like to do is show you how the app config works by changing the way that this executable is run without having to recompile this executable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Notepad, and I'm going to create a new text file, a new XML file, called the same name as the executable, appconfigdemo.exe, plus the extension .config. And in this XML file, I'm going to put some XML that I've memorized for the purpose of this demo, and it looks like this. and I'll simply save that file. Now what this particular entry in the config file does is it tells the CLR runtime which, or tells the CLR bootstrapper which version of the runtime to start up. And I'm going to say here I'd like to start at version 4.0. So now when I start my exe, the uh, .NET framework is going to read in, it's going to notice that there is now, oops, it'll notice that there's now a .config file and when I start the executable, the framework is going to look in that config file and get some settings out of there to control how my program behaves. So notice that I haven't had to recompile my exe, but I've been able to control that, some features of my exe, some features of how it executes from outside in this configuration file. You may never need to do this. You may never need to control this particular, you may never need to adjust this particular setting in your app to config file but it does serve as a good example. And so I'd like to show you how you would do that for your own settings, settings that you would use um, in, in your, the app config file. So what I'm going to do is go to Visual Studio and add a configuration file from inside Visual Studio. So I right click on the project, do add new item, and in my list of templates, there's one called application configuration file. And you notice that the default name that it assigns to it is app.config. So I'll simply add that, and then you'll see that it's added an app config to my project. So what can I put in here? Well, I could do the startup like I did before. Don't need to do that very often. But there's one element in the app config that is very convenient, and that is app settings. So if I simply have some kind of a setting that I'd like to use for my own purposes, this section is intended for that. And it allows you to simply add key value pairs. So perhaps I would like to be able to put some kind of string into my program and have that string stored in my application configuration file. Then I could do that. I'd add key title and my app config demo. So I save that there. And uh, before I recompile, let me do something. I'm going to delete my config file from my output folder just for the purposes of demo. And now when I rebuild this, Visual Studio, and then come back and check the directory contents, you'll see that Visual Studio has added an app config demo.exe.config. Now you'll notice that here in my project, the file is called app.config, but Visual Studio is smart enough to take that app.config and rename it to the name of your executable plus the .config extension. So that's really convenient because it's just always named app.config and Visual Studio takes care of renaming it. All right, so, but now I need to be able to read this value out. So how do I do that? How do I read out values from the app settings section of the app config file? And the answer is, is that you use a class called uh, configuration manager, configuration manager. And you'll see here that Visual Studio is complaining. It says that, uh, what does it say? Let me see if we get, there you go. Type or namespace could not be found. Are you missing a using directive or an assembly reference? So let's try that. Let's see if we're missing a using directive. I happen to know that the configuration manager is in system.configuration. There it is. 
So I add the using system.configuration. And it still says the type or namespace could not be found. Are you missing a using directive? No, I just added that. Or an assembly reference. And in this case, I'm missing an assembly reference. That is that this class is implemented in a DLL that I don't have referenced. In fact, here in Solution Explorer, you'll see the list of DLLs that I, that I can, that are already referenced. System, system core, and so forth. But um, it turns out that system, I mean, that configuration manager isn't in any of these DLLs. How do I know what DLL it's in? I have to look at the documentation. So you can uh, search for MSDN and configuration manager class. And in the documentation, it tells you not only what the namespace is here at system.configuration, but it also tells you what the assembly is. And so this says that it's in system.configuration.dll. So I need to add a reference to that DLL so that I can use the classes that are in it. So configuration manager is the class I need. It happens to be in a different DLL, so I'm going to right click here on references, and I'm going to add a reference. And here's a list of all the .NET assemblies that are recognized, and you'll see there's tabs here for other kinds of references that you can add. If you have a DLL that you're building in another project, or if you need to browse for a specific DLL file, then you can use these other tabs. In my case, I want to use one that's standard to the framework, and so I'll scroll down by to system dot configuration. There it is. Say OK, and then you'll see it appears in this list. And in fact, I can double click here. I can double click on system dot configuration, and the object browser will open and show me all the types that are inside that DLL. And let's see if we can find configuration manager in there. Yes, there it is, configuration manager. And here are even the list of methods and properties that are on Configuration Manager, and the one we're interested in is App Settings. So let's use that. You'll see that now Configuration Manager is Cyan, and there's an App Settings, and which App Setting and I'm interested in, this App Settings property is used to read in from the Configuration file, the App Settings section. So I say I want, I want to read in the title, and I'll store that in like so. And then I might even print out, oops, print out the title. So if we run this now, you'll see that I printed out the title, console right line dot title, and it retrieved the title from my configuration file. And you can add multiple keys, you just keep adding them like so. can come back here and read that one in. Author, author, need a plus. Oops, need a plus outside. Like so. All right, so what we've learned is about the app config file. It's application configuration. In Visual Studio, it's named app config. When you build a Visual Studio project, Visual Studio renames it to the name of your executable dot config. And then the CLR reads this in. And one of the convenient sections is app settings, where as a developer, you can put your own key value pairs. In this case, I wanted them out as strings. If you needed something else, like an int, uh, or an enum or something like that, then you have to parse the string and convert it into whatever type that you need. Hope that was useful for you. I'll see you next time.